Welcome. Welcome very, very much to Conversations, where I'm very pleased to welcome to the program Kirkpatrick Sale. And uh, Kirkpatrick, or Kirk Sale, is the author of a book I want to show right at the outset so that we're sure uh, we don't forget to let you know what it looks like. It's an incredibly important book, and it's called Rebels Against the Future. And if we could come in tight, focus on that, let people know what uh, the book looks like. And it's a uh, history, if I may say so, and modern commentary on the implications of the history of the Luddite movement in England in the early 19th century. Uh, tour de force, if I may say so, and uh, Kirkpatrick, or Kirk, if I may, welcome very, very much to Conversations and, and to Manhattan Neighborhood Network. Thank you, Harold. You are, uh, you've written this book, you've written on many things. Maybe you could just give us a little thumbnail sketch of some of the things you've written on. You wrote on Columbus, you've written on ecology, you are an, you are an ecologist. When did you get the idea, if you could, of writing this particular book? When did it come to you? And maybe you could share a little bit of, of the background with weaving it into some of your other writings that you've done. Yeah, I've been doing work in a general sense trying to talk about the Earth, human place on Earth, how we're going wrong, what we can do right mm -hmm. <clears throat> for uh, 15, 20 years now. Mm -hmm. And I have to take different takes on it as, as they come along. I've, I've done one book called Human Scale, which suggests exactly how humans could shape their place on the earth. Mm -hmm. Then I went on to study bioregionalism. And what I kept coming up against was the obvious fact that Western civilization is the problem. Mm -hmm. It's not the answer, it's the problem. Oh, okay. and, that, oh. and that it is the attitudes that have been taught to us by Western civilization mm -hmm. that are preventing us from the right relationship to nature. Western civilization becoming increasingly uh, the pattern of a global civilization? Is well, that yes. Do you think, or yes, is that another question? Yes, but first is, okay. is the Western civilization okay. that okay. Uh, is shaped, let us say, at the beginning of the modern age, about 500 years ago, uh -huh. when our attitude toward nature is one of exploitation, one mm -hmm. of greed, uh, one of conquest. Mm -hmm. And so when I wrote about Columbus, what I yes. was trying to bring out was the attitude that Europe had toward the Americas. Mm -hmm. It wasn't one of sympathy mm -hmm. to the people of nature or to nature itself, mm -hmm. though they found two vast continents yeah. full of nature well, and me. the people of nature. Mm -hmm. It was rather one of destruction and exploitation. And we have continued that for 500 years, that attitude toward nature, gaining a great deal uh, in our exploitation of mm -hmm. it in the purely material sense, but at the same time increasingly destroying it and destroying its systems. And now in the 20th century, we realize that we are very close to ecocide, to the destruction of the earth itself. Yeah, and that is a theme that is very, very large theme that we all have to come to address. I don't mean to be a devil's advocate here. Um, do you feel that the, the, the uh, Space Odyssey 2001, which began with the early Australopithecine or the early Homo sapien sapien huddling in caves and being attacked by leopards and by taking up a spear against the leopard is a representation of that kind of... Uh, a kind of exploitative attitude toward the environment no, around them by no. putting man's mark on the universe and by having the use of tools and being able to make their mark. That, that's, you that's understand, a, you know, it's that's a, a matter it's a straw of man, survival. But it, you, yeah, okay. Uh, and if, uh, as a species, we have <clears throat> the right and the necessity to interact with other species and to use and kill other individuals of species so that we can survive. That seems fair enough. All species operate that way. That is the way that nature has planned it. Mm -hmm. And if we were to listen to how nature designed it, we could, with limited numbers and limited impact, exactly use the other species of the earth. Mm -hmm. That is not a matter of the kind of exploitation that Europe went on to perfect or that we in the 20th century inherit. Uh -huh. With that kind of exploitation on a massive scale, worldwide scale, uh, sweeps everywhere and sweeps every everything in front of it. Uh -huh. And the reason I got on to the Luddites was that uh, you look at 500 years of this Western civilization and what it's done, you see that when the industrial system was perfected, right, which right. is at the late 18th, early 19th century, uh, we then went another ratcheting step forward 
where we had the power to do much more damage than ever before. So is and this so a, we did. If I may, Kurt, is this a, a quantitative difference in what we had? We had agriculture 10,000 years ago, or is it a qualitative difference that came with, let's say, the Renaissance or the 500 years ago, or the Industrial Revolution? Is it a qualitative change it in the human condition, or is it a quantitative it ratcheting up? a quantitative up? change so great as to be qualitative. Okay. okay. So that what we now have, uh, beginning with the Industrial Revolution, is some uh, power over nature, thanks originally to the steam engine and then to other inventions, that uh, has never been seen before in the history of the world, yeah. giving this particular civilization in its particular form more power mm -hmm. and uh, more threatening power mm -hmm. than any civilization has ever had. Yeah. And it is now worldwide. Mm -hmm. And of course we have, we have uh, now ratcheted that up again in the second industrial revolution that we are now living through, the computer age, as I call it in the book. Okay, you want to call that the second industrial revolution rather than, as some people say, post-industrial. You make that point that no, we're still in it, an industrial it, world. It, these are industries around. They, yeah. they may not look like uh, steam factory yeah. uh, industries, but they are certainly industries. Yeah, but... And the mentality of industrialism that began with the industrial revolution is still with us today and it still lies behind this second industrial revolution. Only now we have, thanks to the computer, a mm -hmm. great deal more power, speed, efficiency to do all of the dangerous things that we do than we have ever had before. Mm -hmm. I wonder if you, if we, if we go back to that. Maybe, maybe we should. We go back. Uh, you said the steam engine was a major break because it broke uh, our link to water mill and water sources and energy. And it's always energy is important to that. But maybe you could just for those uh, to. to the Luddites. What are we talking about? Who were they? You're talking about the uh, early 19th century. These were the, 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 the steam engine was usually attributed to about 1776 that got invented, or the in beginning uh, of the Industrial Revolution is usually coterminous with our revolution in this country and so forth. Well, the, Maybe put it in a the first context. factory that used steam engine in a uh, major way opened in 1785. And the Industrial Revolution is normally considered to be that period between 1785 and somewhere around 1830, um, the early part, the, the revolutionary part uh, of uh, the steam engine. The Luddites were people who suffered the consequences of the steam engine, mm -hmm. and especially as machines became larger and they went into factories. Mm -hmm. And the Luddites were people who lived in cottages, lived quite charming, uh, although you know, fairly constricted lives in their cottages with family, children, uh, community, uh, community with, uh, with intimate ties of, of community. Mm -hmm. And uh, along comes a system which destroys all of that, puts money up in a new way and makes them uh, earn money in a new way that they hadn't had to do and forces them into factories when there are jobs at all. Mm -hmm. Often there are no jobs, mm -hmm. but uh, people are forced into factories and the cottage industries are, are being destroyed. And, and Luddites, displaces, that, displaces that labor input to the production with these new technologically oriented systems. Well, and you, you know, yeah, always, a metaphor for the pro present. Always uh, you, you need fewer people. Yes. And that's why yeah. this, uh, these, these labor saving machines are introduced yes. because it saves uh, the, the manufacturers a good deal of money. Mm -hmm. And they are also uh, systems that can work uh, every hour of every day. That's right. And uh, you, you, you begin to have a whole new idea of work and uh, production mm -hmm. that was not true in the centuries while cottage industries took hold. Among other things, if I may, in the conversation here, Karl Marx, a sociologist, uh, talked of work as being something that somebody gets a sense of identity from. You put a good deal of yourself into it and so forth. A job might be something that you have to do just in order to do a repetitive thing to gain income alone. I don't know if that's distinct well, from the were, idea of work as a, as a calling or a craft. Well, or except as a craft, as, yeah. as a handicraft. Yeah. Uh, that, that's something actually that, that Marx recognized, but he uh, didn't uh, approve of it because that was backward oh, uh, yeah, in Marxian yeah. eyes. Yeah. And uh, he but, liked the idea of the factory. He just didn't uh, think that it should be owned by the people who owned it. I guess maybe I was saying uh, we're not overly romanticizing the joy that was in those cottages prior to the steam engine, are we? Sure. Or are we, you know? James Joyce said, history is a nightmare from which we're attempting to awaken. I don't know. Uh, 
romanticize it. What, what we can say is that individuals lived fairly comfortable lives, uh, and, and not in a high level of material extravagance, mm. but fairly comfortable lives uh, with a good deal of conviviality connected to it, yeah. uh, and a strong sense of community. And they were not bound into wage slavery yes. as they later yes. were. Yes. Well, now, as this process was hitting England at the beginning of the Industrial Revolution, it was these cottagers, the Luddites, yeah. who decided that they would do something about it. Mm. And so it was in 1811 that they organized and had anonymous bands going out in the night with hammers, smashing machines and burning the factories that were doing them out of their jobs and were bringing in this whole new system that was destroying their way of life. Mm -hmm. Inevitably, uh, they failed. But they failed because the British government came down on the side of the manufacturers with an immense show of repressive force. Yes. Uh, something on the order of 14,000 troops were sent into the middle of England for the first and only time in mm. its history yeah. to put down these Luddites mm -hmm. and to protect these manufacturers so that the Industrial Revolution could go ahead. You make that point beautifully, if I may. The force of the reaction to that, also this triangle of land where it happened in mid-England was the same uh, triangle where Robin Hood, or the legend of Robin Hood was, and, and you made that he connection. He too was put down he in too. the same way. But the, but the ruthlessness and the, and, the, and the mendacity and so forth that was involved in putting down that Luddite revolution or rebellion, uh, you, you, you say it was almost unprecedented in English history. Yes, and, yeah. and they won. The government yeah, won. The, yeah. the manufacturers won. Uh, the misery into which these Luddites and uh, the working people in general were cast for the next 40 or 50 years is almost beyond belief. Well, just, just incredible uh, uh, horrors of, of ways of living for millions of people that eventually people like Dickens yes, uh, well, he was were born so appalled in the of all this, uh, that, that they uh, paid some attention to it. Yeah. And eventually there were a few reforms. But uh, essentially what it was is the sight of the conquering of the attitude that people and nature are to be exploited for the benefit of industry. Yes. And uh, alas, that has won. And uh, now we see today another step forward in that same process. And yes, there have been unions. And yes, there's been some government in intervention. And yes, there's been some moderation here or there in that process. But in general, it is the onslaught of a mercantile industrial mentality that has um, pushed almost everything else aside. Mm -hmm. And in the last 20 years of the computer age, the new industrial revolution, we have seen this uh, in a starker form than we've ever seen it before in America. Yeah. Yesterday, the headline was uh, 3,000 more have been laid off by AT&T. Downsizing now becomes the word that that's, everyone can uh, identify that's with. Forty thousand uh, people by by AT and T, and fifteen thousand by IBM. Yeah, forty thousand, and they had a hundred thousand uh, before that. What What's interesting is that in previous steps of the industrial revolution leading up to this one. It was always said that you, you don't worry about it because there will be jobs in these new industries. Mm -hmm. So that if you got kicked out of a job, there was no more job as a buggy whip maker. Mm -hmm. You would find a job in the factories, the car factories. Ford factory, yeah. Okay. And to some extent, this did happen. What, uh, what happened e in an even greater way was that you got jobs uh, making weapons. In fact, war was the solution more often than anything else. Mm -hmm. But what's happening with this time around uh, is that those industries that make this high-tech stuff are laying off people. Yes. They don't need people. Yeah. So there aren't any jobs. If, you, if you're out of, uh, of a work because you make buggy whips, there's no place to go because AT&T doesn't want you. Intel doesn't want you. Uh, IBM doesn't want you. They've also they've also opened things up to a global market scale, both for emerging markets to have their market. Because Mr. Ruther would have said to Mr. Ford, 
uh, you need pay five dollars a day in order to build your market. You need a market in order for the mass-produced goods to be sold. But they now can maybe avoid that here domestically in this country. Wages are stagnating or going down. Going down. They since 1973. Down since yeah. 1973. Since 1973, which is when the computer age begins. Well, there are a number of things. We went off the, the gold standard, and there are a number of different things but, that but, happened but, since 73. But yeah. it's not, yeah. these are not unrelated. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it is in 1971 that the microprocessor is, is invented. invented. Yeah, that is and, a year uh, for you. And, yeah. and developed. And it is by 1973 that we know what the consequences domestically and globally will be mm -hmm. of the new microprocessing uh, age. You think we do? Uh, well, we, are there various scenarios the, and the, we're it, projecting? That is exactly and, uh, why we went off the gold standard. Okay. Because we had a new financial mm -hmm. system mm -hmm. that was able to send little blips on screens mm -hmm. around the world and no longer did governments matter, no longer in fact did gold matter. Mm -hmm. What we were creating is a financial system that is almost independent of money. Yeah. And that's what we have now. Yeah, the information uh, environment that's emerging, although it has more implications than that, and it's got a new wrinkle, as you say, because uh, we went from the agricultural worker to the industrial worker to the service worker, supposedly, in that, and that things were going to move along that way. Adam Smith would say that would happen. Ricardo would have said that would happen. Uh, well, but Marx would have said that would happen to where you get revolution. They would all have but the, 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 the uh, if I may, the, 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 the theoretical economic thinking of our historical patterns did not equip us for a world in which the technology is literally able to misplace labor as an input to production and we still do not have any kind of a philosophy that deals with that question whether it's Robert Reich or Newt Gingrich or the things that they're talking about within uh, the Congress of the United States or among the G7 countries do you think or yeah. do you or is that a major question? You're quite right. What is new is the fact that we now have machines that can do away with people, uh, at least uh, the great majority of people, that, that the machines can, can do the job, or the machines can send those jobs overseas and still keep track of them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that uh, the domestic uh, employment uh, is, uh, is, is shattered, in mm -hmm. effect. Now, you say that nobody knows what to do about it, but uh, it seems that our system knows what to do about it, and that is to just simply go ahead with this mm -hmm. and to lay off these people, fit them into disposable jobs when you need them, jobs where you don't have to pay benefits, very, very low-paid, hard-working jobs, and when you don't need these people anymore, you can fire them. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so what is happening in our economy is that there is approximately 20% or so uh, of useful labor. 80% of it uh, down below is, uh, is mostly junk. And then uh, of that, there's another 20 to 30% that is unemployed in effect. That is to say, uh, although they may not be on the unemployment rolls, uh, they either have temporary jobs, occasional jobs, aren't looking for jobs, or no jobs at all. Yeah. Now, this is a, a distension of the society that it will not be able to withstand, uh, I don't think, for very much longer. But that is certainly the answer that corporate America has decided uh, to, to this problem, which is to say, we don't care what happens. We will use whatever we can to improve our bottom line for this quarter. And that's all that matters, and it's all that seems to matter to the market. Well, that probably is anything that, that's probably all that has really mattered in the minds of the corporate leaders throughout the history of the development of a corporate right. society no is that them. that's what they have their responsibility. The only checks they would have had historically would have been answer to the uh, shareholders. That would have been right. a traditional thing. Or, uh, to the degree that we had at some points, a labor movement where it had real teeth, right. uh, that they had to answer to the, you know, to the, to the organized labor uh, or, response. And that's been sorely Or to undercut. some government regulation. Or, and to government regulation increasing. Right. Now, now, all of those uh, are gone. And, and corporate power now reigns supreme. Well, I'm and, not sure if I may, Kirk. It's not, they're not gone, but they certainly are dissipated. You know? oh, all right. All right. All right. Well, gone, they're uh, not gone. They well, they might be recalled. Uh, they might be recalled, or they might be, you know. Well, I mean, except, 
the labor movement is uh, is is not uh, going to come back, and particularly no. not in conditions where people do not have jobs and and they want jobs. Oh. It's just simply not going to come back. Mm -hmm. And it is down to uh, if you if you take aside uh, government. Uh, unions, mm -hmm. it's down to something like six percent. Yeah, I know. I know. It, it, I, I know. I agree with you. The manufacturing very, very service, it, uh, yeah. it, it, it hardly matters at all. So that's not a f sufficient counterbalance. Uh, governments, uh, in general, simply do not have the wherewithal to save these people. They don't have a safety net. Uh, they can't knit a safety net for these people because they don't have the money for it. Mm -hmm. And uh, then they don't have it in, in Europe and they certainly don't have it here. The, the, anyway, the, the pattern is of uh, increasing corporate control without uh, any checks uh, or reins uh, upon it. Yeah. That's what's happened, thanks to the computer, I would say, in these last uh, 25 years. Yeah, and just I don't see yeah. that there's any, I don't see that there's any, any way that there's, that this is to be stopped. Mm -hmm. I, I cannot, I, and I've looked at, at the range of, of remedies that people have put forth, and, and they have been put forth. And, uh, let's make the corporations responsible, let's control them, let's pass this law. I don't see it anywhere uh, happening. And all I see is inevitably a greater uh, system of putting down the people who disrupt. That is to say, uh, money uh, for, uh, for police and Prison. prisons. Mm -hmm. That's and the world are, industry. Yeah. We are now mm -hmm. the biggest gulag in the history of the world in this country, yeah. and we're getting bigger. Yeah. And you're right, it is a growth industry. One and a half million, I and, think, now are incarcerated. Uh, yeah. One so, out of every 250 people. So if, if we want uh, a system in which, uh, let us say, that 20% continue to work and to uh, make all economic decisions, and then we employ, let's say, another 10 or 15% to be the jailers and the police for all the rest, that's, that's what we're headed to. And I think we can kid ourselves that this is going to work mm -hmm. for a while, but mm -hmm. I don't think that more than 10 or 15 years of this uh, will go by before uh, people simply are not going to take, take it any longer. Okay, there's a lot to talk about. And you also, we want to talk about a sort of in, in larger in-depth questions about mankind's role in terms of the broader evolution of universal consciousness, where man fits in with nature, the arrogance of mankind, ethnocent anthropocentric views, and other kinds of philosophical questions and so forth. But I wonder if we can't go back just, and we will get to that. These are bigger, larger questions, you know, that we want or, to deal with. Or they are all the same. Oh, and they might be all the same. And it might be that some of the answers in those philosophical musings might have the the key to some what might be practical answers, if there are practical answers. And one ultimate possibility is that uh, there is no practical answer. And uh, some people have said that uh, in the a priori mysterious design of universal mind, it may be that we were meant to entropy in a certain sense as a species. There's a book, there's a film now, 12 Monkeys, that is out now that takes that kind of a theme in this kind. But in, in any event, but the idea of the of the of this is you and I are talking about the contemporary situation and that of the Luddites. There, you see a, a parallel between there's lessons and inspiration. Maybe uh, we could gain yeah. certain kind of yeah. uh, heartening attitude that the Luddites had toward the whole enterprise of the Industrial Revolution, not just one aspect of it or reforming it, but revolutionize uh, a revolutionary view toward the whole idea of industrialization itself, which seems to be willing to be accepted by the mass number of people, the great number of people, that it is inevitable industrialization in the pattern that it is, the way it's gobbling up human lives, and that there's no questioning progress in material uh, industrial yeah. progress. They took exception to that. And also Luddite. Where did the term Luddite come from? And do we not want to get away from the idea that Luddite is sometimes taken in some people's mind as a, as a hopelessly, uh, help, uh, hopeless uh, response to a technological situation? They say you're just a Luddite. That is, you're not really being practical in terms of trying to do something to effectively address these human problems. Well, let's see. Again, back the, the, to the, the theme the of the book. There's a history of the Luddites. The Luddites... Uh, took their name from a mythical King Lud mm. or Ned Lud. We don't know exactly the origin of it. I think it probably comes from a King Lud who, uh, back in the deep recesses of English history, was the founder of 
what was called Ludd's Town, which became London. Mm. And there was a Ludd's mm -hmm. Gate in London. Mm -hmm. uh, and there is even, even now a section called Ludd's Gate. Uh, at any rate, this was a, a mythical figure behind which they could operate, and they would send letters in their name, and, or they would uh, put on masks and go out and say, I am King Ludd, and I demand that you remove these machines from your shop, and I demand that you close down the factory, and so on. Mm -hmm. uh, but you have to remember that uh, they lost, that they were rebels against a future that was coming at them with more power than they knew how to stop. And so uh, there is a sense in which it, it is true to say that, oh, you're just being a Luddite, means you will never win. Right, exactly. Uh, mm -hmm. if, if you're against progress. But it's also uh, a, a point that the, the new Luddites can make, which is to say which is to say that this progress you speak of mm -hmm. uh, has to be re-examined. Yeah. Progress isn't simply something that seems to give us something better yes. every day. Mm -hmm. In fact, mm -hmm. progress is giving us a lot of bad things, right. and a lot of problems, right. uh, a lot of evils, and a lot of complexity mm -hmm. that is having not only these economic effects that, that we were speaking about, but uh, social, psychological, and environmental effects that are heading us, I would say, mm -hmm. toward a real catastrophe. Yeah, right. Uh, social uh, catastrophe and certainly ecological catastrophe if we continue the way we're going. Now, mm -hmm. that, that mm -hmm. is therefore a future that uh, we could now legitimately rebel against, uh, whichever way we can in taking up Sledgehammers may not be the way to do it now, mm -hmm. as the Luddites mm -hmm. did back then, mm -hmm. but some equivalent of it uh, may be a way to go. At the very least, we've got to start talking about it, and we've got to start pointing to the technology itself as the cause and uh, as the matter for debate as we face the future. Not simply say, well, technology is neutral, it doesn't matter. Yeah. That's not what's the problem. No, we have to point to the technology oh. as being in the saddle and riding our country in the direction that is going. And our, and our world. And our world. And our world within a broader cosmic yes. order and that sort of thing. They, or uh, disorder. Or disorder or, or yeah, in that kind of thing. And that question of, uh, of, of just bringing a frontal assault upon the whole industrial revolutionary process itself seems to many people they, they people will suffer incredible indignities rather than to think anew about the systems in which they are apart and so forth uh, well, rather than encouraged you, to not yeah. think yes I mean, right. there, there's right. a great deal yeah. that has been developed in a very sophisticated way particularly in this century to keep us from thinking about these problems there is uh, of course all of the substances, uh, alcohol and uh, others that keep us. Uh, there is, we have now with television managed to create a mass deadening machine that keeps us from thinking about things uh, mm -hmm. and that has uh, reached out into virtually uh, every living room uh, in in this country and, and in much of the industrial world. And the world uh, increasingly. And, and we have uh, also provided uh, material soporifics, that mm -hmm. is to say we'll give you these material benefits around and uh, then you will stop thinking. Or if you do start thinking, we'll say, well, you can't uh, have any effect on anything, so you might as well go out and shop at the mall mm -hmm. uh, because mm -hmm. that's all that's, that's left for you. Mm -hmm. And this, uh, this, this larger process of uh, creating uh, ways in which people do not think about the conditions that they live in is appalling and it's very difficult to to penetrate uh, and uh, I have found out that television and talking heads on television 
is not the way to <laughs> penetrate uh, for for most of the time. What can we? Uh, yeah, right. This this dullness, this yeah. absence of, of thought that, yeah. that goes on. Yeah. What is one to do? You know, join a rock uh, and roll band or something. You know, <laughs> well, Alice no, Dagger would have said. You know, or uh, you know, that might even be more of a soporific. More but, of, of the same. And uh, the uh, it, it seems to be quite artful the way our culture has been able to create ways of people not thinking and uh, to, to deflect them uh, into other patterns, into, into sports, uh, I into uh, working, mindless working, uh, in, into other ways so, so that the issue of technology has not come before the public for debate in these years when it has so obviously had an impact. Mm -hmm. uh, Newsweek, uh, early last year, had an article for a special issue called Technomania. Mm -hmm. Even the title of it says something. Yeah. In which it said, this is a new technology that is uh, challenging our ability to cope, that is changing our notions of reality, that it is shredding our constitution, that is changing our laws, that it is altering our mores. And uh, they went altering on... Altering our very consciousness. They went on to make this case uh, fairly convincingly. Yeah. Uh, Yet, yet we're not talking about it. It's mm -hmm. not there for debate. Mm -hmm. And so what, what the neo-Luddite is trying to do, mm -hmm. I think, if I can speak at least for part of them, Please. is to say that we as an American society have got to start talking about technology and what it's doing to us and, and wake up from this illusion that it is just given to us and there's nothing we can do about it. You were, you were talking about the things that might put us, lull us into a sense of not effectively doing that. The, the, the whole notions in, uh, of, of Comte or of, of a positive philosophy or the whole notion of a philosophy of progress, that we are progressing evolutionarily, that there was Australopithecine, there then came Homo habilis, and that there is an echo, there is an order, and that there is a uh, a purpose to biological evolution itself on this third planet, in this solar yes. system, in this galaxy. Where they just told us in the New York Times yesterday that there are six times the number of galaxies that we were previously aware of. That there is a purpose to that biological evolutionary uh, purpose in a direction, and that mankind apexes that purpose, and that that anthropocentric view of the world is that one of the that's things that perhaps I know but it, isn't it, that it, one that is, is, is that uh, one that out of philosophy is held no. comped and that sort of thing and that we have this as a, as a holdover and one of the things that lend, leads us down a, a well, false path and we, we a lack have, of a sense of ecological have, inclusion of the other species or the in, same, in arrogance we, we do have, just something to chew on some people believe that, that progress is something that is, is doing good and doing better for us uh, you can't look or is the around, only thing you can uh, do anything in, about is the future. You can't do anything about the past. You can only do about the future. Yeah, all right, but but we can also say that wh where we're going is is not up and not positive. Mm. It's, it's rather down and negative. Yeah, okay. And uh, if you want to stop to think about these things and debate them, you, you would soon understand that. Mm. <clears throat> You're right in the sense that progress is that elusive uh, pill that people are fed every day, uh, along with the notion of evolution along with the idea that the human is at the apex of all of this. Mm -hmm. These are all terribly pernicious ideas. And, and deep-seated. What they have succeeded in doing is to distance the human from the natural world in which that human must function. Wow. So much so mm -hmm. that either we do not know of its existence in any real way anymore, or we believe in its existence only there to serve our ends. Yes, right. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that is why we have developed all of these instruments to be able to exploit it with more speed and efficiency than ever before. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's indeed what we're doing. Mm -hmm. And it is making some people immensely Rich. Yes. Oh, uh, yes. Some but, people are doing very but well. But it yeah. is impoverishing mm -hmm. uh, the great bulk of people in this society around the world. All right, Kirkpatrick or Kirk, if I may, if 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 we had a system, we had a system where it was not because you're taking we're taking exception to the to the injustices that exist within the world. If we had a system that was able to bring, let's say, not bring the inevitably bring injustices, but was able to be inclusive of all the people of the world and not have the injustices which are growing, which is creating this crisis that you talk about in the modern, you know, comparing it to the Luddite 
revolutionary movement of the time. But if you had a system where the technology was appropriately being, or the justice was finding its way onto the world, and a material standard of living was increasing, and we had then a system that, in quotes, worked, would that be something worth trying to do? Or is that an illusion in and of itself that we can achieve that? The, the, the increasing material standard is the problem. Oh, okay, go ahead. Uh, you? and, and moreover, the idea of justice is so confusing as also to be a problem. All right. uh, and the, the fact that we have so many of us uh, is the third problem. Uh, 5.7 We cannot uh, sustain this many people at any level. We certainly cannot sustain it at a higher level of material progress. That simply means using up the Earth's resources in an even faster way. With uh, something like 4% of the world's population, North America uh, uses on the order of 35 to 40% of, its, of the world's resources yes. every year. Mm -hmm. Obviously, if other people seek this same level of material achievement, mm -hmm. uh, another 4% uh, will be able to do so, maybe another 10%, and then we're using up all of the world's resources mm -hmm. for this, uh, this tiny fragment uh, of uh, less than a fifth of the world's people. Mm -hmm. Well, obviously, that, will, that is not possible to achieve yeah, right. uh, oh, unless you, we are prepared to see uh, the death of those um, four billion people while two billion are able to take over all the world's resources. Uh, and then uh, those two billion people will soon die in their own sink, mm -hmm. uh, of, sink of, of, of pollution yeah, by using all sink, yeah, of, right. of those resources. A behavioral sink. Yeah. There will be none left over for other species, mm -hmm. and then soon we will discover that without those other species, we cannot survive. Mm -hmm. and so so, so yeah. it, it is, it is a, it's a foolish dream to think that there are uh, material uh, levels to which we can rise. And yet we and yet, must, in mm, fact, go the other direction. And yet, Kirk, that's easy for you and I to say, who live in the Western society and have the benefits of a, uh, you know, a, a fairly advanced living standard that we're enjoying now, and for us to say that those of the rest of the world who uh, seem almost universally to aspire and inspire almost manically now, China, other places, to elemental, what would seem to us, elemental material standards of uh, a television set, a VCR, would like to have the mobility of transportation. It seems to be that that is something that they are aspiring very strongly to. Well, and is it right for us to say, we have this, but it's not right for you to be able to have it. We can't consider any way in which those who have not had the material benefits that we maybe are languidly uh, saying we can just do without, or maybe a few of us can't, but do you understand what I'm saying? Is, there, is, oh, is that a question, or the, the, how do we deal with the, it? It brings in a question of some kind of false morality here okay. where it doesn't belong. The mm -hmm. fact is that uh, whether we have this stuff now uh, or not, uh, the rest of the world cannot acquire it without the destruction of the world. There, is, there aren't enough resources out there uh, for the rest of the world to acquire it. If, if all of China... Uh, was to have one car, uh, this would use up the resources of the world and it would produce uh, pollution beyond uh, sustainability. It is, so it is, it is not possible for the world to, to imagine higher levels of material prosperity. Mm. That is, in fact, the problem. And therefore, once you understand that, what, what you work toward is for our society, which is the, the dangerous society because we are using up these resources so quickly, for our society to retrench. Mm -hmm. and to retrench by getting back into a conception of nature in which we live within nature, mm -hmm. not over nature. Yeah, and some and sort of a sense of sustainability and some sort of a... Well, some whatever, sort of, some whatever that limits. means, yeah. yes. Uh, yeah. uh, there is no such thing as sustainable development, mm -hmm. but there is a such thing as sustainability. But, yeah, but it has to go beyond that, because at the population of 6 billion, the human species, one species, is too large 
to be able to settle uh, in the earth. It is killing off other species yeah. at the rate of something like two or three an hour. Overwhelmingly dominant. Uh, yeah, overwhelmingly uh, dominant. All of We cannot do this. Mm -hmm, Therefore, mm -hmm. it's not merely a matter of sustaining. Mm -hmm. It is a matter of retrenching. Okay. Having, uh, having the wisdom to know how to retrench to how to live within the givens of nature. This is the, the key idea of bioregionalism, yes, right. which is to say that you can, you can imagine yourself in a finite section of the world, mm -hmm. a, uh, a watershed, an island or something, where you see yourself intimately connected with nature. Mm -hmm. This is not imagining yourself as part of the world because that is a concept too broad to have any meaning to anybody's daily life. Ready to boy. If, 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 if you see yourself in, in a, an immediate surrounding and understand that what you do has an effect on all these other species and the systems that you and they depend upon, then you will begin to understand carrying capacity, mm -hmm. for example, mm -hmm. and what the limits of the human population must be in that area, and work toward achieving those limits. Yeah, and you might be able to not only understand, there's two things. One thing is to understand intellectually, another thing is to feel it. I mean, yes. the lessons we might yes. have learned from the aboriginal peoples of North, of North and South America who were in a closer touch, exactly. or with the tribal aboriginal peoples around the world, uh, they have things to teach us in terms of the feeling and the, the attitude they have toward the broader world around them. And I don't want to go on endlessly being devil's advocate and bringing all kinds of problems. But Buckminster Fuller, who used to talk <laughs> about, uh, about ephemeralization, of being able to do more with less, that a uh, communication satellite could, took, could communicate as much as 170,000 tons of copper cable. He tried to move against Malthus and tried to say Malthus could be, dis, uh, you know, dis, uh, could be argued against, or the, or the Silicon Revolution for that matter in itself. But being able to do more with less, being able to do, um, to be able to have more production with less raping of the environment, uh, let's say we get to fusion. We get to a system oh, of energy yeah, yeah. that well, is not going. No, I, no, 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 no. I mean, what, I'm more. what I'm talking about. Well, we want to do less. Maybe you and I less. don't, or some of well, us I'm don't. And I'm understanding. It doesn't matter what, what we about want. those people? We, it, it, it is, I'm we, just saying we, 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 you're leaving those people who are not yet on the. You know, and, and if you take that idea about material better, if you bring it down to where uh, my children survive. And if you bring it down to where you're going to say to a mother in a third world country, uh, you have to choose that three of your children are not going to survive, and bring it down to that level in terms of benefits of. Uh, well, that's what, uh, do, do you understand well, what I'm saying? That what, what we, you know, that I mean, will happen. That yeah. is happening. Do you understand now. what I'm getting? I'm getting at the ethics of a disequilibrium in this, you know, the, the, the disequal world, and the people who are have-nots, as we would say, ought to be able to have a shot at being able to have some material, you know, elemental no, standard of material cap. It, it simply cannot be. Well, we can't the, just all stay here like for, like uh, like Henry, the, uh, like uh, Louis the Fourteenth in our palace. Yes, and let the rest of the world yes, eat bread yes, or yes, crumbs provided or we, what? Provided okay. we tear down that palace. Okay, okay. We okay. Are, well, we, that's a different. We problem. cannot be responsible for the rest of the world mm -hmm. except that in so far as we absent ourselves and our systems and our economy from the rest of the world, mm -hmm. they will be much healthier mm -hmm. without us. Uh -huh. They That's will not be able to have our televisions and our cars, mm -hmm. but that is much better for that society mm -hmm. than their having them or attempting to have them. Mm -hmm. They will be able to develop on their own without the industrial system to which they are now enslaved. Mm -hmm. At the same time, we retrench to our own bioregions mm -hmm. and, uh, and make our economies fit into the resources of that bioregion rather than stealing them from around the world as we now do. Mm -hmm. And you begin to see that this is a process of retrenchment that is beneficial not only for the people overseas who are finally free to do what they uh, need and want to do, yeah. beneficial for us because we are brought back to the reality of the nature that we ought to be living in, mm -hmm. but beneficial for nature herself. Uh -huh. now, this is a long Right. term idea I that I have in mind. Yeah. I don't think it'll ever happen. Uh, I understand. I understand. Yeah, but you got to say it. But I understand. That yeah. has got yeah. to be yeah. the the way in which we conceive of a rational future uh -huh. in in which 
uh, we of the industrial world leave the rest of the world alone, stop exploiting it, uh -huh. stop with the ideas that uh, that stuff is out there in their country for us to be able to have. Yeah, yeah. And then we say, oh, well, we'll give them televisions and cars in return. Well, it's the, no, yeah. stop. Yeah, but they, stop. they seem to want it. They seem to want it. Yeah. Uh, they seem to want it very desperately, uh, this, including this, this medical. This, again, is things, a, yeah. an illusion. Okay. Uh, well. it, is, it is an illusion based on the fact that we are destroying their traditional societies. Yes. They have nothing there to believe in, yes. so what we dangle in front of them is all that they've got to admire. You're right, and it happens I, here, I've too. I've seen yeah. this happen in uh, the Himalayan uh, country of... Uh, uh, um, in, in, in north uh, Tibet, west... Bhutan. Uh, uh, in, in, in Bhutan and mm -hmm. Nepal. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I've, I've seen this happen in those marginal societies where Western societies have come in, uh, largely with tourists, yes. and they have brought in, uh, they have destroyed traditional values and uh, made traditional values look ridiculous to school children, to, to grown-ups, and they have replaced them with these uh, dangling baubles of the industrial age. Transistor uh, radios. And, mm. and, and, and they, are, they are absolutely destructive. And a settled society that once depended upon singing around uh, the fireplace uh, or when, when any uh, communal chore was being done. Yes, right. Now turns on a radio, right. and uh, and the whole ability to sing and to learn those songs and to know that culture is being destroyed. Uh -huh. uh, so so you you can say that they they want this, but I think in general it is a wanting that is predicated on the destruction of their previous society. Very likely, very likely. You have and no now, you have no spiritual values. You have only materialism. To, as to uh, the, this medical there. stuff that you, you mentioned, I, again, that has to be looked at in a new way. Uh, there is no question that one of the achievements of this industrial society has been uh, to increase longevity and to make people uh, healthier while they are staying older. Double. The effect of this, around, however, yeah. ecologically, mm -hmm. is disastrous. Well, the best ecological we, thing would be for just to let's, let's do in the human na uh, well, species. We, you know? I, I, I mean, you know, we could find it seems to me a uh, an imaginable limit of the human species at which we were no longer destroying the world, but contributing to the world and helping the texture, the rich texture of nature. I think that population would be quite small. What do you think uh, it would be? What do you, there was a there was a review in the New York Times this weekend about how many the Earth can carry. What do you think it would be? Well, there's a there's a book that is trying to examine this question and well, five point seven billion now I think examining it only from the point of view of the human being yes what about uh, all the other creatures the, the point is to understand and this is what a uh, a bioregional this is what a uh, a sense of uh, our intimacy with nature would teach us that all of the other species are equally uh, full of the right and the the need to blossom on the earth. Yeah. We, we have no right to, to prevent them from doing that. If we exactly. understand that, yeah. we get to a population which is probably uh, on the order of a billion, I would suggest, yeah. and, and, and not much more That's than that. Yeah, it's, 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 now, I think we're going to get to that uh -huh. by our own self-destruction and our own disease increase in lots of other ways. We will get to that uh -huh. in the next 50 to uh, 100 years. Well, that means uh, there's going to but be... It, a, we, but if we do it that way, it will be done with nothing but a series of, of disasters and catastrophes. Yeah, we well, uh, would say the 12 monkeys, you might want to go see that movie, uh, but uh, that's a... That's a uh, but, but I, uh, you know, I, this, 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 this idea, uh, that, that, that idea of getting, getting to, that, to that, that pattern of, uh, of, uh, of population and that pattern, what is it, what is it, do, do the, it, the source of the greed, the source of the material greed, the source of the wanting, the reaching, the, 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 the exploitation, does that come from an essentially insecure inner core, do you think? I the think greed it, uh, and so forth? I think you can look And what it. overcomes that? What would make it possible for people to feel a sense of, um, of enough? I have enough. I have enough of uh, the security of feeling a sense of internal security well, uh, to where they wouldn't have to feel as though they have to exploit these the environment in such a way as they have. Aboriginal people that you spoke of before almost always had 
circular systems of economies mm -hmm. so that there, there was only enough and that all riches were distributed within the community at a fairly equal <coughs> pattern. That justice question uh, again becomes an important well, one. Yes. It's not a matter. Yeah, yeah. I mean, justice is this abstract oh, okay, idea okay, which okay, okay. you try to plug it in. Mm -hmm. It seems to me confuses anything. Mm -hmm. it, that is not why a tribal society does what uh, distributes equally. That's not why. It's, it does that because that provides stability for that society, and and there is not uh, wars uh, and, right. and and hatreds and, and and crime within that society. And quite simply, people care for one another. They feel that that's the way to do it. I mean, well, I mean, and, it's a feeling they've thing built that up, is, built uh, up a long systems of customs and 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 rights so as to assure that. Yeah. But no, but you ask when. This idea of greed. Uh, comes what? What? what, what, uh, what is there, do they ever get enough so the greed stops? What can they do that? What, or if you think to of, who? Or you think to, to to an individual or a to tribal a, to society a does not have this problem. Oh, right. Okay. Right. That's so, interesting. So we. Or if I may, I was thinking DNA is such an amazing thing, an organ, an eagle in flight. It is a, a working of trillions of cells, or a human body, or any organism is such a carefully modulated well organized each cell is in sync with every other cell in there it's not run away if you have a runaway cell in there that's a cancer as we have if you take that in terms of the broader evolution of consciousness on the planet or biological evolution we seem to have a runaway quality the human species in our dominion and our do domination yeah. on the planet that is not is out of sync uh, Lovelock is, is and true, some of the others who begin to now. see an organic vision for the the whole of the biological process in the way and DNA is a metaphor in a certain sense, isn't it, for organization of a of an organism? Or and can we read that larger? Or could we get over to the work of Rupert Sheldrake and some of the things that he sees us in a broader cosmic pattern? And is there any source know, of inspiration uh, for this uh, possibility of our developing an alternative paradigm for the planet? You know, the. The understanding has to be clear that this process of greed, uh, greed may have existed in, in many societies, but it is not uh, inherent in tribal societies. And in fact, all of the rituals and practices uh, would discourage any concept like that. And it would take ideas of individualism and materialism for people to have a concept of greed. Idea, these are ideas not found in tribal societies, neither, neither individualism nor materialism. These grow up, by and large, uh, as we look at it from a Western perspective, in Europe in the 14th and 15th centuries at a time when nothing else pertains, at a time when the church is corrupt and useless and a black death comes in who knows from where, mm. and operates for 100, 150, 200 years mm -hmm. successively, mm -hmm. uh, undermining any pattern of belief yeah. in, in Europe. Okay. In those conditions, mm -hmm. it is not unreasonable for a society generally to turn to individualism and materialism, in other words, to say, I am going to survive, and the value that I will have in my life is more gold, more things. And the better uh, I am, the more of these I acquire. The more of these I acquire, the better I am. I think that the, the attitudes of materialism and individualism upon which capitalism develops are forged along in there in the 14th and 15th centuries. Mm -hmm. After At the play. same time, uh, the Renaissance goes back to Greece and pulls forward ideas of humanism, mm -hmm. which argues that the human is the dominant species and that all other species are, are inferior and can be used by the human to amass these material riches. We've been around uh, about a, we've been around a couple hundred thousand years, and most of that time we were probably prey. Well, or of leopards and the, things the, that were reason, much better able to survive we, than we were. The reason we formed communities, however, was to protect against that. Okay, but and, I'm just saying that we've had communities for, for most say, of that yeah, time. Yeah, but it's not some fairyland we lived in. It was probably a rough and tumble way that we had as we were but coming that's, up. That's and, you know, why some, we yeah. developed these tribal societies. Yeah, okay. Why why we learned to depend upon one another in these uh, communities. Uh -huh, uh -huh. This changes, uh, particularly in Europe, and, and I think it's long in this period of time. 
And after that, uh, that proved so successful a way for a few people mm -hmm. to get very wealthy. Yeah. That this, and then we have the two American continents to exploit, yeah. that a number of people get very wealthy, right. that this pattern becomes established. And the, the idea of greed and me first and material uh, amassment mm. become lodged in our uh, very way of life. Yeah, right. Uh, and that is what uh, we inherit today. And that's where we said the, you the and I The opposite yeah. of, of this, the, 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 the oh. counter to this, oh. is that understanding of our fellow people as a tribal society, we have it, and our understanding of nature as a nature-based tribal society, mm -hmm. we have it, so that we, we did not believe that those were, that material things were the answer to mm -hmm. our problems. Right. We saw in our fellow humans and in our Ecosystem. intimate relationship to, to the earth and to the holy, precious species of the earth. Yeah. Uh, the connections that we want to make. Well, that is indeed a larger and more important connection in terms of, particularly if we go to, we didn't get a chance to talk about Lovelock and Gaia. And, it's the same uh, thing. And uh, Rupert Sheldrake, who sees, uh, Sheldrake sees uh, an organic form for the universe itself, yes. you know, and to get to some right. purpose. And so we have been able to get at that, and we have been able to get at some of the other implications of the, uh, of the, of the, uh, of the development of the, of, the, of the modern experience. But we're in a difficult time. You wrote a piece recently. There's going to be reactions as, this, as the sociological, economic deterioration for greater numbers of people. You wrote a piece in The Nation recently about a sabotage attack by a Unabomber. And by other sabotage uh, attacks, the, 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 the Luddites were, in a certain sense, sabotaging yes, or they, echotaging they were, and that sort of thing. Were. Do you think there's going to be likely to be that kind of a reaction rather than just a passive taking? Well, there is. Uh, as the conditions grow, there we won't has get a already couple minutes been. left, but could you just sort of just touch uh, on that? There's already been the uh, people in Earth First, for example, yeah. who created the idea of echotage mm -hmm. and who used the Luddites consciously as mm -hmm. their guides. King for Lud this. lives, right? King, King Lud, Lud lives. lives uh, yeah. Uh, this this is happening in this country and it's happening around the world in resistance to industrialism, uh, particularly in India and Southeast Asia, where they see the forms that the uh, new agriculture, the new industry is taking in their uh -huh. lives, they're uh -huh. resisting it. Uh -huh. And some of them are doing it uh, with the sledgehammer or its equivalent. I don't think that's going to be enough now, and uh -huh. it wasn't uh, enough for the Luddites. Uh -huh. But it might awaken us to yeah. these questions that I say have to be on the table. We have to be discussing uh -huh. yeah. these issues of technology. Technology. Yeah, it might, it might pressure people to go into a room and really discuss these things rather than just gloss it over and not get down to the, the really important core issues, philosophically or, and otherwise. Or listen to a television program and actually think about it afterwards. That's right. <laughs> Maybe. That's possible. Or, if I may, get yourself in a quiet bathtub somewhere or a blank, someplace and read a really good book uh, called, uh, which uh, we've been talking about, Rebels Against the Future, and it's the Luddites and the... Their war on the Industrial Revolution, written by uh, Lessons for the Computer Age, incidentally. It's written by the author, uh, our, our guest here, uh, Kirk Patrick Sale and Kirk. Thank you really very, very much very for nice. coming into this program, for coming on Manhattan Network, and for all your very important work over the years. I thank you very much for that. We, High in Conversation, invite you. We'll be coming back again next week. I uh, invite you to uh, tune in. That's it for this segment. Kirk, once again, thank you very much for everything. Until next time. My pleasure. <sighs> Uh, I've run it, I'd really like to meet that Sheldrake. You, you say you met him? Yeah. In quite he's a little, a little bit of a... He's a little uh, bit of a... You know, he a little bit of a kook. kook. Uh, well, I when, mean... When you meet him. Yeah. And uh, oh. he talks about his garden and uh, his very strange diet and, yeah. and the like. Uh, but he's, he's on to something. And then I'm also just really interested in the Kelso. Thing. I'll leave you that literature on Kelso. Yeah, you know, I, that will, you can, I will... And, you, I will, and you'd, have to, you'd have to be reading that from a different perspective, you know, that's right. got to do with this question yeah. of expanding ownership and trying to find some pattern to, I don't know, it's yeah. different, it takes a lot of, but we should all lock ourselves ownership, in a room. Ownership is another question, you see, there, there is no ownership in well, a tribal that's society. Well, okay, okay, uh, okay, but right now, if we, collectively yeah, but if we, allow, if we allow it all to be owned, the robots are all owned by 1% of the population, and we continue to say there should be no ownership. Yeah, but we don't want this, we don't want mass production. By well, robots or anything well, else. Well, we got a lot to we talk want, about. We don't want a mass society. We got, we got to get together and have us a, a cup of coffee and talk some more about this stuff. But we can, you know. So uh, anyway, that's a but that's a that that's a big question. So 
And maybe you can send me that off print of that article and background information and stuff like on you and that.